Okay, welcome back, everyone. It's good to have you here. My name is Jordan Barnes. I'm a grateful alcoholic and addict in recovery. Uh, my drug of choice is IV heroin and cocaine, followed closely by alcohol. My home group is Sand Island Treatment Center in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I walked into that program on August 29th of 2011, and, and I've been clean from all mind and mood-altering substances since. I am the author of One Hit Away, a memoir of recovery. And I'm really excited because today we're sitting down with Ryan Haugen, the narrator who actually breathes life into the book. So let's get into it. Produced by Lee. <laughs> hey, hi. So honored to be here, honestly. I didn't believe this would ever happen. Thank you. This is amazing. And it's actually the first time that we have sat down face to face. We've had a lot of back and forth communication throughout the production of the audiobook, which by the way, thank you, a huge mahalo for doing that, for being part of my story. Literally being part of my story is pretty amazing. I feel like we are intimately linked from now yeah. until forever. There is that element to it. And, you know, we go like when we're like kind of fledgling narrators, just looking for anything we can get, we don't quite expect this sort of project to come to us, I don't think. So sure. um, like that sounds heavy, but I mean it in the best possible way. So I'm just thankful that I, I did it well, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah. so they say, so they say. So they definitely said wonderful reviews. So, um, so for those that don't know, Ryan Haugen is the audiobook narrator. Uh, he has a youthful, warm vocal range, sorry, youthful, warm and dynamic vocal range, which I can attest to over 22 titles published. Correct. Is that That's correct? Yeah. And, and going right. And there is one in production now and two right after. So, um, awesome. yeah, there's a cat. I'm sorry. There's a cat. <laughs> it's okay. I got two of them. And, uh, and uh, we'll just, so I don't forget, we'll get this www.ryanhaugen, H-A-U-G-E-N.com. Or you can find him on ACX, which is Audible Creation Exchange or Creators Exchange. That's how we found each other, right? Right. Cool. Okay. So, Ryan, how did you get into audiobook narration? Ah, uh, the million dollar question. Okay. So, it was never supposed to happen, but it did. Um from an early age, I, I mean, who doesn't play with like their action figures and like beat them against each other and do voices for them. Right. I, that's when I finally started to like get into like, I think like a flow with, I can do these different voices because I've watched these like animes, these cartoons, whatever. And then it kind of grew from there. And I just started like, I'm not good at impressions, but I've just done kind of voices and accents for a while, just in conversation. And interestingly enough, what, what really brought it to a head was Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know if everyone listening would resonate with that, but essentially um, I was a dungeon master. I know this is geeky stuff, but to make it quick, I had to be like the voices of all of the characters and villains for a table full of people playing with me. And from that point, people started to say to me, you know, you should really start narrating books. And I like, I knew that audiobooks were a thing, but I'd never been told something. So I guess it seemed brazen to me, like me of all people, you think I should do that. And I got, I just found ACX through Google. Someone said, do something. I Googled the thing and, and I it. started doing the thing <laughs> that, that, that is it. That is honestly all it took. Yeah. And yeah, that's where I am now. So, um, and, that, and that's also how I found you. I also, I actually, so people wonder this, you know, it's typical for an author, especially with a memoir to voice it themselves. And I actually tried, I really did. So my hat goes off to you because um, even though I have a lot of, even though I have more production equipment than the average person, I found it incredibly difficult. One, I don't have the vocal skills to really pull off multiple voices, different genders, different age ranges. I was also under an immense uh, time crunch, as you are well aware. I think we did this in like less than a month. But, mm -hmm. but it's just, and then the, there's a whole editing aspect, right? And so to do it, a lot of people can do it, but to do it well is extreme, extremely difficult. I have a, an author friend, Glenn Dahlgren, who just did his own 
book. He just, um, The Child of Chaos. And I got to listen to the beta samples and it was amazing. But he is like, he is, you know, he's different than the average person. So um, I was so fortunate to find you because uh, it was really important to me. Obviously it had to be done right, but it actually got done 10 times better than I could have ever expected. And I mean, it's, I'm so humbled and I'm so grateful to have found you. Um, and because it was a wonderful experience. Oh man. No, really. Like I, I'm just, I'm using free software. I'm completely self-taught. I don't want to, uh, like humble brag or anything, but I, I, to hear you say that I've never had anybody talk to me about my editing skills. Interestingly enough, the voices, the, the, the narration, all that. Yes. But I mean, that, that is part of it. That's, that's 90% of the whole process is the editing. And it is, it's your brain starts to melt out of your ears with how long that takes for sure. So um, yeah, (laughs) I'm just, I'm still to this day, we haven't talked really ever. And to know that you, that it meant so much to you, I'm sitting here with my hands like this. It's so important to me. It's so valuable to me to know that, that this has meant so much to you. Um, yeah, I, I'm just so thankful, well, honestly. It makes me, so your editing was spot on. And then I don't know if I am a difficult customer because I because it's a memoir to me, like I had this idea of how it had to be. Um, I don't know. We actually set up like a Google Sheet edit thing that was, I thought really convenient to go back and make edits on the fly, but you did it, you pulled them off really quick and really well. And in a couple instances, um, it was a learning curve for me because you voiced some characters, made an assumption, and I just knew for one guy in particular, it, it was it had to be a little different, and to go back and just change it. I remember kind of like he seemed like the the chieftain of the recovery facility. Yeah, Uncle Stan. Yeah. Uncle Stan. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uncle Stan scoots up closer to my leg. You know, we have a zero tolerance policy for stealing. He lets that sink in for a moment and exhales. You're not diabetic, are you? I lift my hands up and let them fall to my side. Hooey. Look at me like a man. You trying to get kicked out? No, not at all. I'm just starving and... Figured you'd help yourself, he says. Look, we're all addicts here. We know all the tricks. Most of us even helped write the rules. Russell is right. Recovery is all about changing behaviors and thinking differently. Yeah. Right. So, um, okay. So I have some questions. I'm going to just drop some on you. I haven't shared them with you. Um, cause I want I thought, your genuine reaction. I thought um, it'd be lame to ask ahead though. It was my <laughs> impulse to ask ahead. Well, there's Come nothing, on. there's nothing too nuts in here. So Michelle says, um, okay. So obviously this is a memoir about recovery. So I don't know, you didn't really know what you were getting into when you auditioned. Um, uh, but you know, it's a pretty, he- there's, there's heavy parts in the book. There's, there's drug use, there's, um, there's death scenes, there's overdose scenes, you know, all in all, it's a story of hope, but there's some very difficult parts. So Michelle says, did you have a difficult time separating your emotions while reading or did you get emotional? Um, I was very emotional. Um, I, I was thinking about this. I thought that this might be a question potentially, but um, so, you know, I'm not the happiest person of all time um, depression runs, runs in my family and anxiety too, in a big way, but I, I wouldn't compare it to anything addicts go through. You know, it, every experience is different. It's all, you know, it's all relative, but, um, I was emotional and there was a, a particular scene. I, I forget the chapter, but, um, you were describing your time in, uh, um, I think it was a friend's room or I don't know if it was a dorm room or what, but it was with the ceiling. I think yeah. you know what I mean step when I'm one, talking chapter about eight, Yeah, chapter 18, step one, scraping, scraping heroin off the ceiling for... Cocking my head back, I look up to the ceiling and curse God. That's when I see it. I squint at the miracle. All along the ceiling are faint spray patterns that look like blood splatter from self-inflicted gunshots. But nobody has killed themselves here. Not yet. I know those patterns well. They can only occur from one thing. Cleaning syringes. After a hit, we always squirt out the last bit of fluid left to prevent clogging in the needle shaft. 
The colors are a deep burgundy brown, and they're mine for the taking. What goes up must come down. Balancing on my desk, I reach up to the ceiling on wobbly legs. With a wet cotton in hand, I wipe it along the ceiling, checking it after a few smears and realize it's working. The cotton is picking up color, along with a light chalkiness from the paint. I continue cleaning the ceiling, laughing out loud with surprise at my brilliance. Jumping down on the floor, I drop the cotton into the cooker. Again, I begin a rinse, and this time, my needle extracts water with the slightest tinge of brown. I ask God to stand by until I spike a vein, and once I see the red flash of blood, I pop the tourniquet and feel faith restored. A large exhale is followed by the slightest release of pressure, yet I'm nowhere close to out of the woods. It will still be an endless night, but if that first pass can take the edge off, I know the rest of my ceiling can hold me over until morning. And and that is, as you say, completely legitimate and honest storytelling there. And of course, I've never felt the way you felt, but I dug deep and like went kind of into my darkest points as a human, I think. Yeah. And that was the only way I could try to channel what you were going through. And I felt myself, I mean, I was remembering what I had gone through to channel that, but I was thinking about you in that moment. And I was just so thankful you were still with us and telling the story. And yeah, I got worked up. I felt, you know, like the bile rose a bit, so to speak. Yeah. But um, things did turn out, obviously. This is a story of recovery, as you say. So when I say the bile rose, know that there is... A, a, a kind of a serendipitous turn and it, it, it works out, but it, it did more than anything I've narrated or potentially even read in recent memory. It has, uh, it has stuck with me. It has done something to me, I think. You, so when I like go back and listen to that, that scene um, in particular, there's a couple, there's the can't stop the time, but it gives me chicken skin. Like it's, it's your voice like clicks and there's this like cloak that comes over and it gets like a very serious tone. Um, but so, so just well-performed. I remember the first time listening to it crying. Cause I was like, Oh my God, this is exactly like his, you can't, you like the goal of writing is to put emotion into your words that you then hope someone can get from reading. It's a mm -hmm. totally different experience when it's read and it's totally different when someone else is reading it too, because it's, it's amazing. And to connect with that on that way, uh, it was, was just, it was, it was hard, but it was also like a beautiful thing because um, I think it's obviously it's super impactful. I know that people have pointed out that one scene in particular to be like, that's where, you know, like you, we just, we just hit it on, hit the nail on the head, you know, and, and that's, that's the whole goal is to is to communicate that because the whole point is showing if it's this bad, then we can get to this good. And I want I want people to know that you can make it out from that point um, and make it out in one piece. Right. Uh, that uh, that moment, I was honestly wondering, like, is this embellished somewhat? Like, is this but it's it's all so real. And like, I don't think I any of my my lowest lows could go lower and but i it was still so harrowing for me and uh you're i'm sure you're used to talking about it by now but um yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. It, you're right and then some it does take off sort of like the bluntness um you know especially when you edit and you and you read through it and you like fine tune it over and over and over and over and over again it's hard to like have that same emotional impact as the first time much in the way as, as like doing drugs you know very very similar um, can you hear my baby? <laughs> can and that is such a, a sign of hope and positivity for it's our amazing. background noise here. That is, <laughs> I know, right? I'm so be, thankful for you. <laughs> it, it could be worse. Um, okay, yeah. So, by the way, by the way, one last thing on that on that chapter. Did you? You? I remember you told me um, your mom had heard some, had heard a sample, and like it was difficult for her because it's you reading yeah. it right it's not yes. anyone else it's like to her that's her son and um how did that feel when your mom 
listen to a sample? Um, when, well, I, I don't know how far she made it, but sure. she heard what she heard and knowing that she felt that way. Um, I mean, she's a deeply emotive person. Everything kind of hits her in a way that it doesn't seem to hit other people, but especially when it comes to her, her children. Yeah. So to know that it affected her in that way, it, it, it sort of spoke to me that, so th this is my mom hearing me act out a scene in a book and it's almost bringing her to the point of tears. Yeah. And meanwhile, everyone around you lived through this so that it's profound in those implications of what it meant for you and everyone around you. I, I stopped thinking about myself. I stopped thinking about myself and I start thinking about you and everyone around you. And I'm just interpreting this. I'm just a freelance narrator interpreting this thing and this here's you and how it actually happened. So uh, it's gut wrenching, honestly. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't stop thinking about you and just sorry to go off on kind of a tangent, but narrating your, your friends and family. And I'm just like, am I doing this justice? Am I doing it well? And it just, there's a concern to pull it off, but I know that you wouldn't be, trusting me with this if it if it hadn't been working for you and yeah i, I guess that's that's my well, end, that's well, that's, end of that's, that one. that's true because um i actually i actually auditioned and uh and contracted a, a, a different narrator before i met you right and and the uh, the he, he's a wonderful voice but he wasn't the right voice i think the the sample was great but as we got into it, there are some things that I just couldn't, um, I don't think we were seeing eye to eye on. And I actually, you know, I, rather than force it through just to make a deadline, right. I, I we, we pulled the plug and, and, and parted um, amicably and it was fine. I think it was a bummer for, for him. And it was a bummer for me because I, I had that much little time because my goal was to release this on my, uh, on my on the day August 29th, 2020, when I made nine years clean sober, I wanted to release the paperback, the ebook, and the audiobook all at the same time. And it was really important to me. That date was really important to me. Um, and so it gave us less time, but then I found uh, found you and then uh, and then the rest is history, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Dan wants to say, what did you use to sound like the drug dealer who kept the drug inventory in your mouth? I snatch the two red balloons and instinctively roll them in a small circle against my jeans to wipe off the saliva. Popping them directly into my mouth, I hear the rubber squeak between my molars and cheek. Our fists bump, and what's done is done. Pushing myself off the bench, I take the first step and don't look back. Get off this shit, Jordan, Louise calls out, as I hear him cram the balloons of doubt back into his mouth. And go home, while you still can. I keep walking back toward the car without acknowledging him. I got what I came for, and it wasn't hollow gestures. I hope he's not a method actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be addicted to uh, trolley sour candies. Uh, I think I believe that's what it was. Um, I was shoving my face full of sour candy, and um, you know, I was worried how it would turn out, how it sound, but I. I it, it apparently was authentic. I didn't know they, they stored their, the, yeah. the balloons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, I'm doing this delicious enticing thing in, in my mouth as I'm recording with, with like almost no real reverence for like the real implications of what this meant to you and to people maybe even this day, but um, no, it, it, um, it took a couple takes, of course. You know, it, it gets noisy being in there with candy. It was just candy. Just, I just not, kept eating all the candy. <laughs> yeah, it's not a street name. It's not. It's it's just candy. Just candy. I promise. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, you know, I got to go over on my calories for a few days, and uh, that's the worst that happened to me. Well, it's, <laughs> so. it sounded so authentic. So we're talking the dope dealers keep the the balloons of heroin uh, in in their mouth, and they start off the day before they go and sell it, and they're and so you actually hear that, like where you spit it out when the guy talks to me and then puts it back in. And it just, oh. uh, I think like addicts um, will get it, you know, it's a super authentic and it's, it's some, it's one of those like very small things that that's really big because people that know just know, you know, and that's just, 
it's it's amazing um, that it came across so audible and you can really hear the difference, you know? Yeah, and there's no tricks in the editing or anything with that. You, yeah. You know, you'll get people who want certain things done to their audio. Like, I want your character to sound like uh, this guy, but five years younger, and they'll just edit it. But and things like that, they need a speech impediment. Can you do this and this and this? But uh, it, it was a real prop. I've never done that, and I, I still haven't done it since. But um, it, that was interesting. Well, that leads me uh, just a little down the way, but Glenn has a question. Do you use sound effects? Or are you strictly narrator? I narrate, I edit, I master, um, I perform. Um, I'm not opposed to sound effects, but they are going to be almost strictly uh, royalty free. Unfortunately, that might not sit the best with some people, but um, there, there are some hardliners in the narration community who think that it's distracting. It, it defeats the purpose of what you're trying to do with um, the medium, I guess, so to speak. So I'm not opposed. I just don't want to take something that could be really good on its own feet and make it maybe corny. You know, I have not tried it really extensively, but I guess I'm not opposed. Is it considered like cheating in the narration world? It is not, I don't think it's considered cheating. And that brings up an interesting, an interesting point. I've been listening to a, a graphic audio book recently. It's like fully cast. Every character has a voice and it, it goes as far as to like the characters will be sitting at like a table and you can hear the wind coming in through the window and oh. the cups being clinked on the table. So I, I don't think it's considered cheating, no. I guess it depends on how much of a purist you are sure. and how much immersion you really want. But I think um, if you're not doing like a graphic audio, that's its own genre at this point. If you're not doing graphic audio, too much can be distracting. And sure. uh, gen- generally, I don't think that it is encouraged. But if that's the vision that the author has, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Cool. Um Another question from Glenn. What was your biggest challenge recording? Recording? Yeah. Okay. So, well, obviously I'm never really comfortable physically. I have a a bad chair. I'm in a tight space. It gets too hot. All of those sorts of things. I can't blow a fan at myself. Like I I sit here and I can do that. But uh, physically, those are the obvious yeah, we're picking up your complaints. fan. Can you turn off your fan? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could turn this thing up higher. Let's, let's do that. Um, the, the hardest parts, apart from like the obvious physical stuff, I would say were just, I felt like I might have been walking on eggshells for a while. I was so cautious with getting your story right. And I knew you had people near you who had gone through it and they were saying it was like this. So it has to be told this way. I think that was the hardest part for me being genuine and authentic and knowing that everyone who loves you and carried you through it in a sense was also satisfied with it. It's kind of an emotional strain, but it, it ended up panning out much better, better than I thought it would. Uh, so with, with a memoir, that would be the hardest part, I think. And it, every genre, every form of storytelling is different. But f- for your story, that was the hardest part. Yeah. And like we've talked about, it was great. I mean, people really resonate with it. People that know my mom and dad, for example, love the audiobook because they're like, oh, I hear your mom and dad, even though it's not their voices, right? They're like, oh, I hear them. You know, it's like, and it's, uh, they, it's just, it's, it's so well done. Um, I'm not, I'm just, I'm, I mean, I, I honestly, don't think I could have asked for a better narrator. And I mean, I, mean, that- I, I could sit down with you and tell you all the good things about your book. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that we're, we're kind of <laughs> lifting me up here, but don't forget you provided this, just this amazing source material. I, I, I need a good launching point to do anything at all. And um, that's the, the tip of the tip of the iceberg to just give you the small compliment, but 
I will. I will. Thank you so much. But I will. I will say that there was a part during editing where I would read some of the. I, I pretty much read all of the dialogue aloud at one point to just kind of catch like the awkward things, you know, to like what maybe reads well um, might not come off natural. And so that was part, that was one like uh, editing revision that I did was just going through the dialogue. Right. I think by the time the book was done, I had like forty or fifty different revisions i really i mean it took two years of writing obsessively honestly extremely unhealthy um very uh painful at some points because i couldn't stop thinking about it um but honestly i think i had the, it was a story i had to tell and it, and it was a story that i think we did really well on um okay so this is a question from my wife so she asked besides me Besides Jordan, who is your favorite voice to narrate and why? So, um, honestly, Uncle Stan comes to mind. Yeah. Uncle Stan comes to mind. And also, um, there was, I don't want to just call him the surfer counselor. Mike. But <laughs> Mike, yes. God, that's such, so easy. How did I forget that? But, like, it was a test of how low I could go in my register, but just also, like, how can I punctuate this, this tide of kind of darkness with a guy who's just kind of removed from the whole thing, who's been through it. And like, no matter what he's, he's there, he's, he's your report in that storm and he can bring you back. How are you holding up? While waiting for my response, he crosses his feet and extends them out past the side of my chair. They look like flippers. It's okay, I guess. I'm weak and always hungry, but mostly, I just wish I could sleep. You will in time. I can promise you that, he says. Mike slides on a pair of reading glasses and buries his nose into my folder. It says that you detoxed before you came? He leans back in his chair. Lucky. Yeah, for a week back in Portland. Good, that's good. Because it's a beast of a drug to kick. His eyes light up. Be thankful you're not going cold turkey, though, like I had to. He lets out a guttural laugh and slaps the desk. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. He cranks his neck back and looks up toward the ceiling for so long that my gaze follows suit. Yeah, you'll be okay. I'm excited to work with you. If I had any guard up, I let it down immediately. I believe I can trust Mike, knowing that he understands what I'm going through. He's old enough to play the father figure, but talks to me like a friend with my best interest at heart. We're not going to get into too much today, but that's okay. Recovery is a lifelong process. Like, depicting that character, uh, so Mike, Mike might be, and also um, Uncle Stan is up there, and um, Uncle James yeah. is yeah. also up there. M maybe number one, number two, I'm not sure. The purpose of today's class is to help prevent you all from doing more harm than good. James looks at the loved ones in the room, ignoring us clients. My job is to make you understand that you can't save these men. Moving forward, they can only save themselves. But, um, honestly, coming in kind of in the, the second act with those positive characters, th those are by far the standouts for me. Yeah. For and, sure. and um, sadly they both since passed away. Right. And so to get it right, to get it spot on was like even more important, like, ha like to honor them through like a great narration, through a great story to represent the positive forces that they both were was really important, you know? Um, and uncle Stan, like, uh, people that know him, right. People that knew him when they hear it, they're like, awesome. You know, like that's so well done. And he, cause he was like an older sheriff type and he had this like heavy, like huff and like his voice was, I can't, maybe you can do it, <laughs> but his voice was like heavy and raspy <laughs> and like, you know, like a floppy mustache and stuff, but mm. he, just a wonderful person. And he's actually on top of being a wonderful person was really pivotal in my story because he should have kicked me out of the program when I got caught stealing and he gave me a second chance. And that was such an important uh, event because that changed so much of my thinking out of fear. I'm going to be kicked out of here. And then I realized 
I don't want to be kicked out of here. I, I need this program. And so that was such a important scene because he could have thrown the book at me and he didn't. So like in many ways, mercy, showing grace and whatnot. And then um, where that got me, just, I, I owe him a lot. I actually went to his, I went to all of their services, but I went to Uncle Stan's. And I was able to tell his family, you know, how important he was. And that was really important to me to show up sober and, and say, you know, hey, he, he really had a lasting impact on my life. I think that was something that the family, I, I wanted them to hear that. Oh, to, to think that it, that they're listening to it. And do you, do you know that any of his family has heard this? Yeah. Or? I think that on top of giving copies to like most of the staff in there, I know people have shared it and I've also given out, I pretty much gave out all the ACX promo codes. So wow. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, I, ho- I mean, I hope it was shared with his, um, his, his family or his children, but I know that uh, if it, if it hasn't, then they can totally get it at any time. Yeah, definitely. Wow, that, that there's been no more, no more emotional experience in this line of work than where I'm sitting right now. I will say that. Well, it's a real so. story and it's, and it's ongoing, right? So like you're part of my story that is also ongoing. It's not like a fantasy world. That's like in someone's head brought to life, not accessible. Like you're, we're, we're, these are real people. I mean, even Ty and all these people are still working at the facility, you know, and, and they're still part of my support system. So it's really cool. Right. It's I, like, I, I, I hope whoever's pigeon I was trying to do is not terribly offended by that. It, but. So, okay. So that was, <laughs> that was the only, the only slight someone gave me. And you know, I knew this would happen because Okay, first of all, pigeon is hard. I'm from Hawaii, Hawaii, and speaking pigeon is difficult for me. And I grew up here, and I I work with people that speak pigeon. I mean, I, I know the language, and I just I grew up here. And so you're from Iowa, right? Have you ever yeah. been? Uh, have you ever been out here? No, <laughs> I have so many embarrassing things I could say. Um, did I mention there's? I live in a town of of ten thousand people, and it's not due to anything we wanted to have happen yeah we were going to be moving out west but the pandemic kicked off and it's it's a long story but um i i live in the town i live in in iowa and there's there's a mahalos here have you heard of mahalos it's like a cough it's probably only here but i'm just thinking how exotic the the people in in iowa must feel that they can go to a place called Mahalos mahalos and it's got like the (laughs) size <laughs> the logo the and it's like, <laughs> yeah uh, th- th- i mean that that's so i haven't been further west than kansas kansas it's, 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 I that's been, where my mom's from I haven't but, been further west than kansas. but that's but that said so we worked really hard right i told you from the onset the hardest thing of this book is not going to be the emotional toll it's going to be nailing the pigeon because <laughs> that, mm-hmm. it's so difficult to translate and you know we went we did a couple passes I got you some samples. I sent you, I had, uh, I had a tit a friend record an audio and sent to you and you did good. You did good, but there's always going to be a critic, right? There's always going to be someone out there that said, Oh, that's not, you know, and someone said like, get someone from Hawaii to voice it. And it's like, no, right. That's like a very small portion of my, my book. I'm not going to base it on just finding a local narrator. It's got to be the right voice for, for me. Every day, our phones ring off the fucking hook with people hoping for get inside. We no more time for waste here. Get your clients inside fighting for save their lives. So if you like come in, if you like what we get, I need to hear a commitment. Right here, right now. So, what you gonna do? I pause for a second, wondering what the hell I've gotten myself into. I try to play through the alternatives and realize there are none. For once in my life, I may just be right where I need to be. I go to clear my throat, but I let out a weak cough instead and exhale. Come on already, she says. It's hot out here. Now, what you like do? Anything, I say, surprising myself. I'll do anything. All right, Bumbai, we'll see about that, she says. Yeah, at, at one point I was like, he might be happier with like a like a, a crew or something <laughs> to get this done in the way you needed it done, but I'm glad I could get you... I, I, no, I, it, was, I could, yeah. it was good, it was good. And you know, the some of the... Um, some of the words, the just like local street names, those are just standard mispronunciations that anyone would make unless you're from here and you know that W sound like V's, like Halawa prison versus Halawa prison. So, mm-hmm. but we caught all that. I mean, and you went back and like made the edits great. 
So yeah, I think I saw that complaint. Like it wasn't a native speaker, and um, if if that's the biggest complaint, then we're good. <laughs> I'm we're sitting good. pretty, I think. Yeah, yeah. as because because the thing is, we tried, right? We tried really hard. Mm -hmm. We didn't just like run some stuff through, and and honestly, that's like I said, that's a very small portion of the, of the of the whole audio book, and it wasn't done bad. It was done good, you know. Thank you. My hat's off to you. My hat's off because I told I told my friend he's like you know the pigeon's going to be the hardest part because even if you like I said even if you're from here extremely difficult. Um, okay, so uh, here's another question from Instagram. So, do you mind voicing female voices and how do you tackle that? I think by when they say do you mind like uh, is it difficult right? Is it is it challenging? No, I've actually landed many books just because of the female voice I could yeah. do. Cutting the light, letting the window down. In half a mile, the dice game will be on your right, arrived. What do you mean the doors are locked, Jordan? Bang on them if you have to. I know someone is there. Someone will answer. Tell them you made a mistake. Tell them you need to get back inside. She catches her breath. Jordan... I need you to find someone who works there and hand them the phone. I need to talk to them. Hold on. I hear her in the background ask my dad to get Hooper on the line. Mom, please, stop. It's not going to happen. Listen to me. I pinch the bridge of my nose. I'm not ready. I asked to leave and was discharged against medical advice. The only way I'm getting back inside is if I start the process all over again. And with my fucking arm killing me, it's not going to happen anytime soon. I'm sorry, but I can't talk any longer. I'll be in touch. A long silence fills the void. Oh my god, you are going to die, she whispers. It's honestly easier than doing a lot of male voices. Um, so, oh. I, um, I, I, my voice just cracked, but it's easy to go up one register and then go up one register and then go up one register and you know depicting them and and that sort of thing is an entirely different story but for me it's always is it within my range and i i'm pretty confident i can act most things out just fine so no not at all i i, I actually really enjoy doing it i cannot i think that was a defining um that helped me make my, my decision when i tried to do the audiobook myself and i had to do a uh, my mom's voice and it was just oh. <laughs> i have very little control over my vocal range like i do not have I, it's very difficult i can try and drop my yeah, voice but don't don't ask me to do my mom's voice right now <laughs> I, I, will not. I will not so when you so when you narrate so do you i've always wondered this if say there's a scene with three characters do you go do you read it live or do you go through all of the one character's voices or all of their lines and then edit it together? Or are you, are you able to jump back and forth and come back to this? And is it, how do you, how's it work? What do you do? Um, it is jumping back and forth and doing um, multiple takes of the dialogue. Um, sometimes if need be, if I'm struggling with one character's voice, I'll, do a take like this or do a take like this. And then like, I'll leave that as it is, then move to the next character. But more often than not, I'm doing a take and feeling confident with it and then moving to the next character and like getting ready for them and then doing them and then getting ready for the next character and going to them. It's usually a straight shot um, like that. And I'll have multiple takes of like whole strings of back and forth rather than one line one yeah. line, one line. Sort of, does that make sense? Kind of. Yeah, I feel like it might be difficult too to have to go back and put everything to to chop to cut everything and make it come out like a natural conversation. I feel like that yeah. would be much harder than jumping back and and voicing it. Sometimes, if the narrative isn't making a whole lot of sense, like I'll be like, "Oh, a dude said this, not a girl," and then I'll be like, mm, "Snap fingers." That's like my my sign in the wavelength that oh, I yeah, have to you edit can something. See it. You can see yes. it, right? Yes. And so then I'll be like, all right, move this magic back for 40. Yeah. <laughs> magic. Move, it, move this back 45 seconds and then we'll, we'll keep that in there. And that did happen a few times with uh, recording one hit away, but 
uh, fairly straightforward narrative uh, in, in I mean that in the best sense like I was not confused narrating it well that's thank you that's a compliment because if you're not confused narrating it then hopefully people aren't confused reading it there was obviously I'm so grateful too there you you were almost like my last pass editor in a way because by reading it you did come back and you're like hey I think you meant to say this or uh I'm confused about this who is this and then that was my cue like okay I need to clarify this and it was awesome. I mean, having someone read through basically a script to say, uh, we, we caught a lot of stuff. So thank you. So again, you're part of this, you know, you're definitely a part of my story. Um, mm -hmm. in, including the print version. In fact, you made it into the print version. We got it done just in time. So I was able to thank you in the print version and, and, and give you, give you your, your website a link. Yeah. Um, I should, maybe I should crawl back out of my uh, social media hole and reveal myself to the world now that this is happening. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, I, I'm with you. I'm an introvert through and through this book was uh, uh, challenging because it pulled me out of that, you know, like um, people that know me know my story, people that don't know me, if they don't have a reason to it, or it's, no, it's not their business, they don't necessarily know it. But now it's an odd thing that anyone that wants to know about me can just go and purchase a book or get a credit or download it illegally from somewhere and then just <laughs> and then just get into it and know know some very intimate things, you know. Um, I will say that on the business aspect, the audiobook is is doing incredibly well. Mm. Super, super humbling because I'm very happy. I mean, it's, I knew I, so I knew I had to do an audio book. Actually, I didn't know I had to do an audio book until my wife's book club read an early pre-release copy. And one, one member of their book club said, Oh, is it on audio book? And I, and I was like, I don't have time for no. And she's like, Oh, I'll wait till the audio book comes out. And then I oh. realized there's a whole, there's a whole population that for whatever time restraints or whatnot, that's, they just, um, they just listen to audiobooks, mm -hmm. And, and I, and that, that was like my, okay, I should listen to this. Cause that was feedback in a way too. And that, that really drove me to want to release it at the same time. Yeah. Audiobooks are booming. And like there, there's been kind of a fall off with the pandemic because people listen to it on their commute, but then again, people are more isolated and yeah. it, it's, it's just made everything complicated, but more or less, yes, they audiobooks are booming. So I, I, I guess this brings me to sort of a question I did have for you, honestly, if I could ask just a small question. Um, was it, hard for you to conceive of this being told by somebody else? Like, did, did it feel, I don't want to say worth it, but were you worried at all that like something might be lost in translation if someone else told your story? Yeah, definitely. It was a big yeah. concern. It was a, yeah, that's a valid question. Um, you know, the thing is I've had a lot of people, not intentionally, but I've had a lot of people ask me like, Oh, wait, you didn't narrate it. Or when I was working to have it narrated, people were like, don't you think you should narrate it? And the answer to that is uh, yes and no, right? I'm not a voice actor. It's my story, but I don't have, audiobooks narration is a skill, right? Not everyone should do it, right? Definitely, I would, I would get behind that 100%. And I tried it, right? I tried it. I, I wanted to see if I could do it. And I wasn't happy with my performance and that's okay. It, but it was important for me to find someone that could pull it off and, and someone I could work with. And that person is you. And so I'm very happy to have you. It, it's a gift to have you do this for me, you know, because you breathe life into it in much a way that I could never have done myself. Yes. It's my story, but some of these chicken skin moments are so well acted and narrated that it's it just it's wonderful but it was very uh, you know there's still people that say uh you know a, a, an author especially of a memoir should narrate it but so people will have their opinions so you know that's okay right. that's okay you can't please everyone that's not my goal my goal is not I to mean, please everyone i mean do you have like a hundred hours just chilling over here to do that with you know it's it's a lot it's a lot yeah yeah and like i said i tried and i and i and I, I made the right decision, 
right? I don't have regrets. I don't wish I could go back. I don't plan to go and re-record this at a later time. The one thing I will say that was a little awkward was in the uh, afterward, where it's like me talking about where I'm at my, myself. The only part that was awkward was when, when it said like, and Chelsea, sweetie, I love you. <laughs> right. I, I tweeted about that in like, <laughs> like a subtweet kind of way. I think you might've re- uh, recognized yeah. did, if you saw my tweet, but I was like, this is one line of work where you, where you get to tell more people's husbands and wives than you love them <laughs> than you will ever get to. Now, like, yeah. <laughs> now may I go back at a later time and re-record just the after myself, perhaps. If, Maybe, maybe, I mean, you know, it's, so the biggest compliment is that people, um, people that I, the people that know me, people that like know me, know me, know me, like family, friends, aunties, uncles, when they hear the audio, they say after like a few minutes, someone told me this and it was such a great compliment. They're like, after five or 10 minutes, we forget that it's being narrated and we're just listening to me speak. Right. I mean, that's, you basically like disappear you're no longer a narrator and then people are in the story they're they're experiencing it it's told first person pov right so that we've like we we achieved that we were able to draw people in and they no longer feel like they're listening they're experiencing it and what are the odds of that like happening the way it did i i don't even know i don't it's, know either i don't know mind either. blowing yeah because we i went through a bunch of auditions and, and there's some great voices out there, but not every voice is for every book is for every project. And I'm surprised because is this, this is your first memoir. Is this your first memoir? It is my first memoir. And then I narrated a sort of, I guess some person's travel logs cool. after, the, but this is like the first, like kind of almost life story, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So effects basically, well, it totally is. Yes. <laughs> yes. It totally is. Yeah. Because I listened to your other, I mean, I bought some of the other audiobooks, uh, the Shire and the Shriek or whatever that one's, but, you know, cause to like, to check it out. Cause I wanted to like hear your experience and then support the author. And it's um, it feels like, you know, fantasy and sci-fi you get like a lot more freedom i feel like you know like you're in different times and different places being different people um all right so let's play a game so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw you under the bus right now i'm gonna i'm gonna request that you pull off some random accents so um can you do a, a new york new yorker's voice you know i i had to do kind of a bernie sanders <laughs> accent for various things there was a character who was a detective in a book I was narrating. Um, but, you know, so it turned out, I don't know how well that book is doing to this day. That is the New York adjacent accent that I can do. <laughs> that reminds me, um, Pierce, Pierce, the, uh, Pierce for my book, the uh, groundskeeper at the synagogue. The Jewish voice. I remember hearing that and it was so, it was so nut. My eyes chase his words as he describes the scene to the dispatcher. He respectfully approaches and leans over the body to make a clearly hesitant observation. Yes, it appears the young man is deceased, he says. 1972 North Flanders Street. Yes. Correct. Seven. Two. Please hurry. And oh my, we have a bar mitzvah scheduled today. Um, okay, so what about an alien accent? Well, you know, there's the stereotypical kind of like, we can sound quite odd like this. We sound like we have tentacles coming out of our mouths. <laughs> that sort of thing. But the most recent alien I've done, he is... Uh, coming through translation so the human hears him like he would normally sound but he's lazy and like addicted to poison or something well, so cool. <laughs> he, he sounds a little bit like this why are you here human why are you bothering me with this trifle so you've got different kinds of aliens you've got the why are you bothering me with this trifle and you've got really honestly why that kind of alien. <laughs> it depends like the aliens on the kind of... living amongst us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, well, yeah. there goes the warlock. I guess it's a uh, alien and a warlock. Okay, what about what about a young lad? What about a young boy? A, a young child. boy. Um, the fantasy epic I'm taking part in at the moment has a young child who is um, well. He's the main character. His name is Louis. And uh, so if I were to get into character as Louie, I would probably uh, start with, <clears throat> we have to master our elemental power so we can stand against the Necrom. That's our only way. Something like that. You know, I'm not in my booth right now, but you could, what else could yeah. you do? You could say, um, I'm sick of my training. Why can't we just go fight them now? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. close my eyes so I can hear it. And uh, if you re were watching this, rewind it, close your eyes. You can totally. <laughs> I uh, hope so. <laughs> I, I have hope to put so. you on the spot. I have to put you on the spot. Look, if you're listening to this and you uh, are an author and you want an audiobook narrated, I can tell you from experience that Ryan Haugen um, did an amazing job. And he's the best narrator I've ever worked with. <laughs> that, that means so much to me. And it, your story has been. Uh, it uh, just kind of a a quilt of everything for me. The most emotional. I mean, I don't want to say I, I can't say things like the most well written, but like it's just why not? I because <laughs> there are people who probably want me to say that about their work, and I have to be careful how many times I say that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! How about hey? We well, we did just win the twenty twenties best book of the year award by indies today which is nuts that's, that's true so Super it's the humbling. best book i've ever read honest to god it is the best <laughs> i mean <laughs> uh, so so rewinding a bit here um uh, i mean you'll probably work with other narrators there are people better than me but to even hear that where i am now is is absurdly uplifting and it's been a confusing year last year was a confusing year and our competition on ACX has, has, as narrators, has tripled. Whoa. It's more than tripled. Oh yeah, the number well, of books is everyone's roughly home. The same. Everyone's home, right? I know they're doing what they can to to make money and uh, even side gigs and all of that. So, so you've been working from home since before it was cool. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I I quit my day job um, in Mar or May actually of last year, and uh, I've been doing this ever since, but it really only got hard to land work around like November or December. And like, you know, it was peaking at that point and all of this, but um, yeah, I thank you so much for those kind words. It's um, I'm, I'm just, my voice is breaking like a teenager over here. Um, we're done. It, we're done. Uh, we're, we're done with the kids voices, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I don't have to regress backwards through puberty for you and for no reason. Well, so <laughs> I will say that like from the author, from an author looking to hire a narrator, I got what, for those that don't know, the standard is you, you release like a script and then narrators audition, and then you can go back and forth. You can discuss pricing, you can discuss royalty shares, all of that stuff. But I will tell you that there was a lot of auditions that were just, I'm not going to say bad, but they just weren't the right ones. Right. And so while there might be a ton of narrators, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's an influx in a ton of great narrator, narrators, right? I mean, this I could be a narrator on ACX if I wanted to, but I wouldn't be very good, you know? M maybe I sure. can do something to meet someone's budget out there, but um, in many ways, you, you get you get what you pay for. And um, I also got to say, I just feel lucky. I feel lucky that I found you because um, you, you did a much better job than I could have asked for. And when it was done, it was just like, we did something that, that we Googled and then we did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but like we did it, you know, and I don't know that I'm going to work with another narrator in the future because I'm not sure I'm going to write a book, but if I do write a book, you're, you're going to be the first person I reach out to. Oh, thanks so much for that. And you know, as much as I think, a sequel would be good for our money. I don't think you need to live through that kind of thing. Yeah. Like we don't want a, a sequel. I, I don't know. What would you, what kind of thing would you write? You know? So, so I have, I've had, I've kicked around a couple ideas. I actually tried to start a story last night and it was just super vulgar and offensive. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? Like it's not the right time, but here's the thing. This book was born of pain 
And it was um, my brother passed away during the writing of it. And it was a tool that I used to to channel pain in many ways and to occupy my mind. And I can't recreate that. You know, I it's also it's not my only story, but it's it's very much like most of my story. If I were to write another book, it would either be uh, like a, a short list lessons learned, perhaps like how to get through different things in recovery. Um, but also I'm very much restricted to reality as an author with a memoir, because it's really important that the book is true. And so part of me wants to just write a novel and just kind of like unleash my imagination, um, which also would be really fun. But then again, I've got a nine week year old baby and I don't, do I want to stick my face in a laptop for the next two years? No, do I don't I know. I, I don't, I don't think so. I think, um, I think this book, was done. It, it served its purpose. It's helping people. It's amazing the people that um, have reached out to me since we released it. It's just, I mean, it's really, really cool. Stories are powerful. Stories can travel. You know, you can send them across the globe. It, it's 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 amazing. It's it's really like kind of a beautiful thing. Um, oh. Well, I, I will, I'll never I'll never say I won't do something again. I'm not going to sell myself short. But at this time. Um, I don't have anything in the immediate future planned. Well, I think your writing chops are where they need to be for something else to happen based on my experience narrating 23 books total at this point. Um, I mean, if, if I like hypothetically, if I could say like, just to do like kind of an arbitrary comparison, if, if I knew that my narration skills just as like a hobbyist could end up like where your writing skills are, I would be very, very happy. Like I just did this as kind of a lark and maybe you wrote as a lark, but it was, it was a way to express something deeply intimate to you. And I I guess this is just a long way of saying, I really hope you keep writing. And if it was just a hobby thing, you're, you're still super good at it. I appreciate it. It, That's kind of how it started off. I'm not an author. I mean, I'm an author because I publish a book but I'm not, uh, I'm not like, I wasn't like an aspiring author that like tried his hand at a bunch of different things. I just decided one day I'm going to write a book and then I did a bunch of research and then I, then I did it, you know, that's, but that's like how I am with a lot of hobbies and a lot of things in my life. Like I get, I have an addictive personality and I want to like do things and I, I want to figure it out. It's like, it was a, wonderful challenge you know but i did it and it's done (laughs) and it's good and i'm so i'm so Mm -hmm. proud of it and it's so you know people like you um people like kate wadsworth the 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 cover artist my editor jesse mills we all like came together and pulled this off i mean literally you were working with me before this book was released right so you were in many ways like like i said the last editor so it's a team thing my wife all the beta readers that helped out um, I can take credit for some of it, but I can tell you that a lot of people help me catch a lot of things. By the way, I don't really know what lark is. I know what lurking is. <laughs> On a lark, just sort of like, oh, this might be fun to do. So you're doing it on a lark, like you just last minute. No one says of, that out here. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> do you have larks out there? Are there larks out there? No, we got meth heads lurking in the bushes. <laughs> I don't know if we have larks here. I, I've just heard it before. I read too many books and I retain even less. It's, yeah. <laughs> you know, if I, if I marked off all the books I, I read on my Goodreads, it'd be overflowing. But I, I if, if anything, I'm, I'm learning new things, phrases, accents all the time. They're yeah. not always clicking into place, but things like on a lark, you know, th- that, that might be just a result of narrating. I, I, I mean, 500,000 words. I don't even know at this point. I but, think uh, it's, I think it's super uh, impressive that you also, um, or not also, I didn't quit my job, but that you quit your job to pursue not just your passion, but something that you're really good at. You know, I think that that's, I think that's awesome. And um, I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm just glad you don't hear like the bus noises that I left in the audio and things like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I I'm was, mostly just kidding. I was going to talk to you about that after we ended the video because that's my only complaint. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, get, I, I live next to a busy road. I, you, I'm surprised you can't hear it now. You know, like I live on, I live on a kind of. A I've heard road. a couple things, honestly. I've heard a couple things. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, who cares? <laughs> So, uh, so what's next? What, what's, what's in the future? Okay. So I'm working on a science fiction book at the, at the moment. Um, after that, I'm doing another science fiction book. And after that, I'm doing book two in Steel and Magic, written by M.A. Leon. I hate to plug here, you asked. But um, so that, her first book was what really got me rolling here. We would not have met if I didn't do her first book. Thank so, you. oh, well, th thanks, thanks to Melanie, if you watch this, who knows? But um, so there's finishing a book, two others after that, that's gonna be almost summer at that point. And I just hope it stays steady. And uh, I mean, I've got to make some upgrades to my studio before you guys figure out what I'm really recording with. That would be, that'd be awful if you really knew. <laughs> so you're, so how far out, how far you're booked out to summer? Um, I am, well, comfortably booked until if I give myself some wiggle room, I'd say uh, mid-May. Yeah. Good. Because, you know, we don't have seasons out here, really. So, like, when people say, oh, till fall, I'm like, can you tell me the month? Because I don't <laughs> know what that translates to. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, and the spring. And I'm like, I've never bothered to figure out the different seasons. They're yeah. not, like, ingrained in Well, me. you know what season you're in here based on how many inches of snow you're getting. It, do it doesn't matter the month. It, it, you get the worst of all extremes in Iowa. It's the hottest summers, the coldest winters. I don't know why anybody's here, but uh, I guess there's corn. I don't know. Corn? There's like corn. corn. <laughs> Everybody needs some corn. Everyone needs some corn. S <laughs> send me some Iowa corn. I, 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 <laughs> what are you if you're from Iowa? Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard the USB boop, 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 like something got disconnected. Oh. <laughs> if you're from Iowa, you are an Iowan. Iowan. An Iowan. I do know that. Like Hawaiian. Iowan. But <laughs> m much, much less interesting. I promise. <laughs> All right. Well, um, okay, so before we say, before I bid adieu, um, is there anything else that uh, I, di I didn't touch on that people listening might want to know or, or be interested in? Mm, well, uh, I, su I suppose about the book, I'm not sure. The narration, I'm not sure. Um, I guess other than how incredibly moved I am that this all happened the way it did, and um, I suppose if you have enjoyed anything you've heard about me, you know where to go. No, they don't. You... Tell them. Tell them. Oh, oh. Well, that that might have been a few minutes ago. Now, <laughs> um, RyanHaugen.com. Haugen, as in foothill. I think that's Nordic or something. <laughs> and uh, there you'll find my ACX page. I'm always looking for new new work. I want to make this my. Uh, lifelong full-time job and i uh i want to bring life to what you're doing and if, if jordan has anything else of course i'm interested in that and uh for the time being it will be uh by far the most emotional and fulfilling hu truly human thing that i've taken part in not to diminish any other authors you're all doing different stuff but no one quite has a story like jordan so yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, should we even bother shouting out your social media? I'm on Twitter at Ryan Haugen VA, at Ryan Haugen VA. There I am. You can DM me. I've done deals through DM, whatever. It, it doesn't matter to me. So that's th those are a couple ways you can find me. Or you can email me at um, rhnarrates at gmail.com. We've got an official email address here in this apartment. So awesome. I, I hope you join me there and we can work something out more than anything. I'm just thankful that you've experienced Jordan's story and that we could tell it in a way that resonated with you. Yeah. I, I will say about half the people that have experienced my story have done it through the audiobook. That's about, mm -hmm. that's about the split. So about 50% wow. audiobook. So half the people that know my story heard it, um, masterfully narrated by you which is awesome and i'm again i mean i know we've talked about it, but i'm i couldn't have been happier such a gift it really i feel i feel that way it was a gift to have you narrate my 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 book so um 
All right. So you guys, you've already heard it. He's, he's, uh, his price is going up as we speak. So if you're thinking about it, you better get on it now because he's booked till summer, right? Yeah, th- those DMs are open. <laughs> yeah, catch him in his DMs. Um, <laughs> well, hey, so thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, I guess my only last question is, if I miss anything, would you consider uh, doing this again sometime? Absolutely, my man. Just let me know. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So again, one hit away, a memoir of recovery written by Jordan P. Barnes, narrated masterfully by Ryan Haugen. Haugen is in the foothills, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> don't worry about it. Is available on Amazon, Audible. Uh, go check it out. Listen to a sample. Uh, if you want to hear his work, you can go listen to it right now. You've heard some other samples. Ryan, mahalo, a huge mahalo. Thank you so much for all you've done for me. I, I truly appreciate it. Jordan, hooey, hooey. <laughs> <laughs> we did the hooey so many times. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Aloha, Ryan. Mahalo. Have a wonderful day. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thanks to you. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. <laughs>